Hi everyone. Today I'm going to cover, you know, the process of how to file TDS return for Form 27Q using the free IT software. So I purchased a property myself and I had to go through a lot of hassles, finding a lot of information on how to fill this form and how to fill this return. So I thought I'll make a video which will help everybody. You know, I purchased a property from NRI and we will be talking in detail about step by step how to file, you know, uh, your return using Form 27Q. Um, you know, I'll share my personal experiences. I'll try to cover each and every field. And, you know, I'll also cover how do you download the free RPU and FU UV files. And uh, uh, so th that is all required to file this return. And uh, so let, let's start. I, I'll try to cover as much as I can. That helps you. So uh, the first thing is if the seller or deduct, you know, uh, is a non resident right that is you are a buyer you've purchased it from a non-resident indian then you are required as a buyer to deduct tds as per the provisions of section 195 of income tax act and i'll share this link you know that talks about this in detail then further you know um you are required to furnish all the forms uh, or all the information related to deducting this TDS on property, you know, in form 27Q. So one is you have paid TDS. So I'll cover, a, I, I'll prepare a separate video on how to deduct that TDS. But then once you've deducted that TDS, you have to file a return in form 27Q uh, statement as, you know, long-term, short-term capital gain. And uh, the buyer or deductor, you know, uh, you will need to apply for TAN also. I'll create a separate video for how to apply for TAN as well. And you can go through that video. So after you've deposited the TDS, after you filed your return as a buyer, of the property from NRI, you are required to issue form 16A to the seller in respect of the TDS that you have deducted and that you've deposited in the central government bank's account. So if you're a salaried employee, you usually get a form 16, right? Because of for, because your employer is deducting your salary. Similar to that here, you are the deductor and you have to issue form 16A. That is the difference between 16 and 16A. And if you want any more information on this, you know, you can go through this link. This also I'll provide in the descriptions. Uh, but what this link is, this is, uh, you know, this is a document prepared and shared by the income tax department. This is a four page document this covers all the information with respect to who is a non-resident and you know what is the rate of deduction how to deduct the tax you know what should do you do as a buyer what should you do as a seller what are the last dates so i'm not going through any of this this link i'll paste you can go through this but in this video what i am going to cover is specifically 27q so before i start going into the system so 27q form is a quarterly statement of deduction you know under section 200 where you've made payments other than salary to non-resident so in case you've bought a property from non-residents, so you are making a payment to the non-resident other than salary. And that is why you are to deduct the tax, right? And submit that return to the government. Now, this also information specific to 27Q. If someone wants to go through, here is the link that I'll share. And this is what it says about, you know, if the seller or deduct is a non-resident, what all do you have to do? Now, moving on to how do you actually go ahead and uh, file this form and how you do you use this form. So first of all, what you have to do is you have to go to the income tax government uh, website. And then what you have to do is you have to register. If you're not registered already, you know, uh, you can go ahead and register simply providing your TAN number. So here, for example, I had already registered. So I was when I when I try to validate or get registered, it says this has already been registered. So um, so once you registered with your TAN and you've logged, you have to log in with your TAN number, not your PAN number. Remember, this is your TAN number that you have to register and log in with. So once you've logged in, you've entered your password, what you have to do is go into the services and you see here file income tax forms. So you have to go to this. And then what you have to do is you have to choose deduction of TDS at source, you know, deduction of tax at source. Here is where you see, you know, you scroll down. That is where you see all these forms, 26Q, 27Q. So you have to choose, you know, click on file now. And once you click on file now, what it will ask you is, you know, the documents that you need to uh, file this return. You know, one is this return preparation utility. That is the uh, RPU. You have to download this and you have to, uh, def this is something that is mandatory that you need to do. So if you're not a C and if you are trying to uh, file a return on yourself, this video should help you. And then once the 
file has been prepared the website says that you it should be verified using file validation utility that that is the fpu and we will be talking about both of these in detail in the video going ahead now like it says you know these are the documents that help you file faster you know you have to download the rpu i'll share what is the latest website so there is some confusion with respect to where and how do you have to download this from so this is the official website where you have to download this from and then after you've downloaded the return preparation utility, it asks you to download the file validation utility as well. So ideally, when you download the RPU, FVU is automatically downloaded along with this. So this link will help you in case because of some system differences that file does not, uh, you know, download automatically. Uh, you can go to this link and download the FVU application as well separately. And we will cover all of this in detail uh, going ahead. So let's get started. So this is the link that I was talking about. You know, you have to go to the protein tin pan website and then what you have to go is, you know, uh, you have to scroll down and you will see RPU for quarterly, uh, you know, under the download section, you have to, you, you will see the uh, RPU for quarterly returns. So this download RPU version latest, whatever is available on this website, you have to click on this. And this is the uh, tutorial that guides you with respect to, you know, how do you file your return? Uh, uh, there's a complete document that I'll show you. So first of all, you're downloading when you click on this, you know, it will download a compressive folder. You just click on save and save it to your computer. And then what you can do is, like I said, you can also download FVU to be on the safer side. So from the same website, if you scroll down further from the same section, you can download the latest FVU as well. You should have admin rights in your machine because these are e .exe files that will be executed and the software will be installed on your system. So this is the link that I was talking about from NSDL. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is a little old, outdated. They do not update it much. So you might find it a little confusing at times, but there is a lot of useful, meaningful information also that you will find if you want to go to this. I'll provide that link in the description for your reference. But if you're watching this video, that should hopefully clear all your doubts and you should not need to uh, go through this. So then once you've downloaded the RPU, what you have to do is you have to open the RPU. It just gives you a message that, you know, these are some prerequisites. This is the system and you need Java and all. If that is not there, you will probably have to download that. But usually these days, Java and all of these requirements are met. If not, just go through these requirements and, you know, make sure your system is updated with the latest versions of Java or the operating systems. So click on OK. And then what happens is this screen opens and then uh, the first thing that you have to do is choose your form. So in our case, we are choosing 27Q. If you are filling any other form, you may look at this video and find this useful or relevance as well because the same details would be similar. But what I am covering in this video is 27Q. And then what you have to do is you have to file a regular return as of now. You are not filing a correction, which is if you filed a regular return, and then you found out some you know issues. That is when you file a correction. Once you have done this, click on continue or you can also open a save reg saved regular file. So in case you get disconnected or get away, so what you can do is you can click on this link and open. You don't have to restart. You you know just save that file. It will ask you to a prompt to save it on your computer and you can open it and resume from wherever you've left. So right now we've clicked on continue. And then what you have to do is you have to give your TAN number and you have to choose the financial year for which you are filing this return. This is very simple, right? So once you've chosen that, you will get this message that you have to choose the quarter for which you are uh, filing your return. So the quarter is where you've deducted the tax. That is the quarter that you have to choose. Now, what you have to choose is whether you are a company or an individual. In my case, I am an individual. Then what you have to do is fill all of these details. But what you should pay attention to is even though branch is not mandatory, you can mention this as none because when you try to validate it later using the FU, it will throw you an error. So it is indirectly a mandatory field and that is the issue that I was facing. So I thought it is best for you to know. Uh, similarly, what you have to do is you have to fill all of this information, your address and your PIN code. Um, and then what you have to do is once you filled your address and other information that is mandatory here, you can click on same as above if these details are same. Otherwise, you can uncheck this and fill all of these details again. So in my case, they are the same. So I click these. Some of these fields will come populated from here and some you will have to uh, fill in yourself. So here, for example, designation you can put as self. I don't know if you can put housewife or salaried or anything. I think any of those fields would work. But here I have put designation as self. 
so uh, and then again all of these are address fields they get copied there from directly now what it asks you is has your address changed since you filed the last return now what is confusing is you are filing the return let's say for the first time so what then you can choose is no because this is the first time that you're filing the returns your address is not changed and then this again ask you whether a regular statement 27q has been filed for earlier period if you are filing it again then your answer can depend on yes or no but if you're filing it for the first time then what you should do is you should you can fill this as no and what you have to do here is you have to also fill your email and uh, mobile number these are though not mandated but you know it is one it is good to enter this information and sometimes you might still get an error if you not fill this information so once you've uh, selected this whether you filed a regular statement or no it says that kindly confirm that there is no other statement that you filed for uh, previous quarter so which is okay because this is the first time that you are filing this return so you can click okay and proceed from there now what you have to do is you've till now filled on form section now you have to fill the chalan details right right now you fill the form and now what you have to do is once you go to chalan you have to click on add rows and then how many rows do you want to add if you just have one single row then you can add one if you have multiple rows you can add two and kindly note if you are two buyers and there is one nri seller you have to do this process two times separately you are not doing this you know together for two buyers you have to do it for each buyer two times so let's say you've clicked on number of rows as one you click on okay and then what you have to do is start filling these details now what you have to do is you have to open your chalan that is where you made your tds payment and you have to fill all these details what was the tds or charge education says interest fees penalty if there is any that you paid and then you know the bsr code is also mentioned on your chalan number once you filled all this information you know the receipt number uh, of you know uh, the from the chalan what you have to do is you have to uh, you know fill the date on which you deposited the amount through the uh, to, to, to of the transfer right so that is the date for example that i am showing that you have to fill here then once you've done that you have to choose you know the main minor and minor head which is 200 in case you know tds payable by taxpayer so uh, so 400 is for uh, regular assessment that is once you filed your regular uh, return and then there is a query or you know intimation from the income tax department and you have to file it again that is when you can choose 400 but for now you have to choose 200 now what you have to do here is you chalan details you filled right that is how much tax you paid through the chalan those details you filled now when you move to the a next year one which is the deducti details which is the seller details from whom you bought the uh, you know uh, property or you are making any payment to the nri so what you have to do is again click on uh, insert a row click number of rows that you want in my case it was one so i've added one row and clicked on okay what happens is some of these fields they already come in from the chalan tab so you know the chalan that you paid for for deducting the tax of uh, deducti, these all details again, you know, the ones that you filled in Chalan tab, they all come in here. Uh, so uh, then what you have to do is uh, you have to move further, scroll to the right, and you know, section under which you've made the payment. So it is 195 for if you bought a property or choose your appropriate uh, section. And then what you have to do is that this is where you have to give the pan of the deducti. And then uh, what you have to do is here, uh, you have to give the name of the deducti, date of payment and amount paid. Now, what is confusing is you filled TDS related details from the Chalan, but here what you have to fill is the total payment that you made on that. So, for example, if you bought a property for 1 crore and you made deducted 10% tax is, you know, uh, 10 lakhs, that is what you have to, uh, you, you have to fill here, right? So, in these three sections and then further are the details of TDS, the tax that you've deducted. Those details you have to fill in, uh, same as Chalan. Now, this is the date of deduction. When you deducted the tax, that is what you have to mention. And, you know, uh, what is the reason for non-deduction? You know, it will show you some options, A, B, C, D, you know, making payment to a non-resident for this, this, this. So, that is where you have to choose. So, um, for, for my case, where I bought a property, I had to choose A. Now, then you have to choose one or two, whether you are a company or other than company, you can choose two in case you are an individual or one if you are a company. And then the date at which you deducted the tax, you know, in my case, the uh, seller had applied for a lower tax uh, TDS. And, you know, even though 
it i was liable to deduct 20 or 22 percent tax he had applied for a lower tax and the income tax department approved it so i deducted 12 percent tax now what you have to do is you have to enter the certificate number that was issued you know for lower tds in case the seller had applied for lower tds that is what i was talking about you have to enter that certificate number if you don't have that you have to get it from the uh, seller and uh, whether you know the tds rate is act a or double taxation avoidance in 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 my case it was uh you know a so in your case whatever it is you can choose that now what is important is nature of resident uh, nature of remittance what i chose is other income if you choose any other field other than other income which looked more appropriate to me what will happen is it start asking for name email and address of the deductory and manda as mandatory field and it was not accepting and it was not letting me file my return so i chose other income and maybe it helps you that if you choose other income it works for you so uh, then what you have to do is you have to fill the country of resident and if you see here address contact number all of email id of reducti these are not mandatory here but if i chose any other nature of remittance they were becoming mandatory and system was not accepting those values also so that became a big problem and i had to research and find this out uh, then all of these further fields beyond this are optional you know if they are applicable to you if you have that information uh, you know you can mention that for example if there is cash withdrawal in excess of 1 crore then you have to mention that if not then uh, you know you can leave these as blank these are not mandatory fields uh, so here if you see grossing up indicator also is something you know that you can leave as blank it is if you grossed up or you know rounded off the figure but but it is not mandatory to fill you can leave that blank if it is not applicable to you then once you've done all of this what you have to do is click click on create file when you click on create file this pop-up will open and what you have to do is you have to enter the chalan input file name which is the cin with path now how do you know what this file is now what do you have to do now that is where you have to go to this website 10 nsdl you know old task website and what you have to do is you have to download a file through which you paid the chalan for tds and this is i'm going to show you how you have to download that and upload it here so you go to this website i'll add it in the description then you click on tan based view you enter your tan number and then you know enter the range when you deducted the tax enter the captcha and then click on view chalan details what it will show is it will show you the chalan details of when you deducted the tax and then what you can do is you can click on confirm amount to make sure this is showing the correct chalan and you know it will start showing your amount once you validated that this is correct, that is where you download the Chalan file. Once you download the Chalan file, if you see this is the CSI file that it was asking there. So you have to download this file, save it to your computer and then, you know, come back to the software, RPU software, click on create file, click on browse. Now open the file that you just saved as CSI and give it here. Then what it says is if there are errors, where should it save those errors for you to view? So you can choose the path wherever you want to save the file in case there are errors you can view that and uh, you know just click on save and uh, then uh, what you have to do is you don't need to fill the consolidate file name with path what you can do is you can just click on validate and you know it says file successfully validated right and uh, this, please submit this next uh, this form in the next step so if you see here file is validated in case there are errors where the file location that you have chosen you know uh, it will open a web link and you can view the errors that you are getting and then you have to fix those errors i got a lot of errors which i've already fixed and shown you for example the other income or uh, nature of remittance and other errors that i was getting after i fixed all of those errors one by one i was able to successfully submit it you click on okay it gives you another message that after successfully filing you can check the status of state uh, you know uh, your quarterly return under this website you can again click on okay do you want to give your feedback you can click on okay or cancel i click cancel then what you have to do is this is the file that was downloaded form 27a for you know and if, uh, so this is the form that was generated you can verify all the details that the details that are showing here the details that you filled are showing correct now after you've done that what you have to do is again register if you're not yet registered or log in with your email id and password once you've done that again go to fill file income tax forms go to you know uh, deduction of tax 27q click on file now click on let's get started and then you have to choose form 27q which is non-resident other than salary here 
then what you have to do is you have to select the financial year for which you are uh, deducting. You have to select the quarter, you, whether you are doing a regular or a correction return. If you're doing it first time, then it's regular. And if it's a uh, you know, second time you are rectifying that return, then it's a correction. Now, this is where you have to attach the file that you created using the RPU software. You have to open the file here. And if you see, this is the compressed file that you see here. You know, it, it created a .fvu file. That is what I was saying. So if you try to open it, it will show you that the file is validated. And this is the compressed file that you have to open. So uh, when you open the compressed file, click on open, right? And then what you have to do is that you know, uh, then you have to click on uh, proceed to verify. Once you click on proceed to verify, it will just ask you for a confirmation. Are you sure you want to e-verify? And then it will show you these details. And then I, it will ask you, how do you want to e-verify? There are multiple options. For example, you want you have a digital signature certificate already. If not, you can validate with the mobile number that is registered on your Aadhaar. And then, you know, you can uh, already generate an EVC code. And, you know, if you want to come back and uh, put that EVC code here, and then you can do that as well, you know, uh, or you can say that I already have an OTP or EVC and you can file that. So this this section here gives you all the details about generating EVC, but this step is very simple. So I chose the Aadhaar, you know, OTP using Aadhaar, it says, you know, uh, that one time password will be sent. You click on uh, generate Aadhaar OTP. You will get the OTP, enter the OTP. And then once the OTP is correct, it will say, are you sure you want to submit the TDS return? As soon as you click yes, you know, it will say that yes, your return is uh, successfully submitted. It will give you the transaction ID acknowledgement number. And then what you can do is you'll also receive an email with respect to the same. This is the same message that it was showing and it came to your email. What you can do is to verify again, go to file income tax, uh, you know, go to view filed forms. And, uh, you know, you can see here that the form was submitted. It was accepted at e-filing and then it will show you the acknowledgement number. Uh, you can view the RRR number as well. This is the receipt number. You'll need it at multiple places later as well, you know, in case you're filing any corrections or in case you're filing, uh, you know, late filing fees or something, this will help you. So you should have this number saved with you. And then what you can also do is click on download receipt and it will download the receipt for you. Just save this on your machine and this is what it will show you that, you know, you've successfully filed your return and uh, this is uh, done. So the process of using 27Q is now complete. It was a little complex for me because I used it for the first time. So I'm hoping this video helps those who are using it for the first time. And don't forget what you have to do is after you filed form 27Q, you also have to issue a form 16A to the uh, seller, which shows that you've deducted that TDS and you've also deposited that TDS uh, with the government. And in case you forget to file your return on time, there could be a late filing fees of 200 rupees per day. I've already created a video on how do you file correction for form 27Q and how do you pay for uh, that. So uh, this is all that I wanted to cover. Hope, the, hope you like this video. Uh, please uh, like, share, uh, comment, subscribe in case you like this video too, uh, as it gives motivation uh, to, to keep making, making such videos. Thank you so much for watching.